All right, students. In the previous class, we have studied that uh, the poem of John Keats, "A Thing of Beauty, Joy Forever." And in this poem, we have seen that how John Keats has mentioned that nature or the beauty of nature casts an enchanting spell and sprouts a boon for all of us. It uh, it provides us calm, calmness, peace. All right. whenever we are going through the darkness or the gloomy environment or we are uh, disappointed on uh, uh, over something then nature has that power to heal us all right has that power to transform us all right it has the power to change our minds to change to convert our stress into peace all right so this is what the poem is saying that negativity can be converted to positivity in nature all right if a person is pessimist if a person is surrounded by negative thoughts then he will you know uh, have positivity or he will become optimistic in nature all right so this is what we saw in the previous paragraphs also in the beginning john keats has mentioned that how uh, the source of beauty whatever is the thing of beauty for us it its joy will remain forever all right it will never turn into nothingness and it will keep on giving us happiness everlasting happiness eternal happiness throughout our lives all right then he has also mentioned that of course uh, you know disappointment and despair are the integral part of human life but whenever we are stressed whenever we are worried whenever we are you know in tension one thing that we can provide us solace one thing that can provide us peace is nature all right now we are going to continue with this poem children he is saying that yes in spite of all in spite of what children in spite of the darkness in spite of the gloom we are surrounded by you know it is really uh, true that we are humans and the way there is you know uh, light at the end of tunnel all right if we are passing through a tunnel we know at the end of the tunnel we will get to see light in the same way when we are passing through life of course when we are living definitely problems will come this will uh, disappointments will come gloomy ways will pass through right but at the end when we are going to find solace it will be in nature all right so in spite of all means in spite of all disappointments in spite of all despair in spite of all gloomy ways in spite of all darkness one thing that provides us solace one thing that provides us peace one thing that is a blessing for us uh, you know bestowed by god is nature all right some shape of beauty moves away the pall right what do you mean by pall children pall is dark clouds of uh, over something right dark uh, darkness over something here pall is a metaphor of problems right so we all are living and we are bound to face problems in our life isn't it problems are going to hover us but one thing that relax gives us no no makes us relax is the nature all right it the source of beauty and what source of beauty has writer talked about nature all right so nature will definitely move us away from darkness all right the dark clouds and dark clouds are here is the metaphor of problems that we face in life so whenever we are stressed one thing that moves away moves us away from the stress is uh nature all right the beauty of nature from a dark spirit such as sun the moon trees old and young sprouting a shady boon so here what the writer is wanting to say he has presented few images of beauty all right few source sources of beauty few things that actually casts an enchanting spell and what are they children they are sun moon trees all right they are all like blessings what is boon children they are all like blessings that have been bestowed upon us by god all right so few things have been mentioned a list of uh, you know uh, beautiful things that are present in nature the list of you know the things that can provide us a cooling covert has been presented over here by writer and those things are trees sun moon all of these are like a source of beauty that gives us joy and what kind of joy 
everlasting joy. You may have personally experienced also whenever you might have, uh, you know, visited a hill station or you might have, uh, you ha might have uh, been sitting in a garden, all right, in amidst the flowers, right? Then you must have experienced a different kind of joy, peace, solace, clear? Sitting in nature, sitting under a tree, the bower of a tree is seriously a blessing, clear and we can also you know uh, take an example of uh, newton he was also sitting under a tree and got a got an excellent idea when we are worked up no when we are so stressed we do not get any idea for you people when you are working when we are studying when you are studying for your exams when you are preparing for your neat i i t j e whatever then you people must be worked up right you must be so stressed then one thing that can actually help you is nature. You should spend some time under the tree. You should spend some time in your garden. You can, you know, just move out and enjoy the beauty of nature. You can feel the cold breeze outside. So all these are the, you know, sources of joy that has been given to us by God. And these things definitely help us remove our fall, the problems, the stress. All right. It takes us away for some time we are we move away from stress and we have also learned in keeping quiet isn't it then when we are continuously working we are unable to do that we are unable to achieve results when we are continuously working when you will continuously study of course when you will have to study you will have to give time to your studies as you are preparing for something big but you can give time to your own self all right and what kind of time do not spend your time on mobile phone all right do not spend your time do not uh, go ahead with much screen time rather to relax your mind you can you know uh, uh, just take a walk outside enjoy the flowers the trees all right so that will actually relax your mind and then when you resume your studies you will be able to do it in much better way all right so definitely these are small stresses that you're going through life may show you bigger ones all right god forbid life may show you but then the, this is one source nature is one source that will actually take you away from the problems of life all right which will relax you, make you forget your problems for some time. All right. So definitely nature soothes us. Nature calms us. Nature gives us solace. Nature gives us peace. All right. So this is what has been mentioned in this poem. Right. So the narrator is saying that, that there are, he has presented few images of beauty. And what are those images of beauty? Sun, moon, trees. All right. These are all the sources of beauty. Four simple sheep. Now, why has the narrator mentioned sheep word over here? Because Jesus Christ, who was the apostle of peace, all right, he who was the messenger of peace, was always surrounded by sheep. He was a shepherd, right? He was surrounded by sheep. Sheep is envisioned as innocence, all right? Sheep and lamb are envisioned as you know the innocent spirits clear so that's why he's saying that even looking at sheep all right this is a source of beauty that will relax your mind clear the animals as i have mentioned and such are daffodils daffodils are flowers all right so the sight of daffodils when we look at lots and lots of daffodils that sight will actually cool us that sight will provide us peace inner peace internal joy so all these things the images that the writer has presented of sun moon the sheep all right then trees the daffodils all these are the sources of beauty all right and these sources of beauty gives us everlasting and eternal happiness clear all right with the green world they live in now what is the green world you know nature is at its best in the lush green uh, meadows and pastures isn't it so you know whenever we are in the middle of the meadow or a pasture or we are in the middle of greenery 
we are automatically you know relaxed we have no worries all our negative thoughts move away vanishes all right so this is what the writer has told over here what is the writer saying that then when we are in the green world when we are in nature which is the gift to us by god we definitely feel that you know a uh, peace within clear and what is green world the lush green meadows pastures right so all these things provide us happiness and joy all right and clear rills what are clear rills children what are streams ah uh, what is stream are the source of you know beauty they are elixir of life elixir amrit right so they are so you know the sight of those rills you must have been to water bodies right you must have been to streams you must have been to rivers right you must have been to you know uh, so many water bodies and the sight that sight gives us such a cooling covert it gives us such peace that we you know forget all our worries so all these are the images of those things images of beauty that nature has provided us clear okay. that for themselves cooling covert may now when we go close to a water body all right does it provide us a cooling uh, you know feeling cool feeling within yes it provides us what do you mean by covert area of thick bushes where animals can hide all right so it is also kind of cool covering clear so when you go to a stream go to close to a water body there are so many plants over there and when you sit under those trees when you sit close to those plants it gives you such a comfort it gives you it relaxes you so much all right so all these things the names that have been mentioned it is entirely a list that has been presented to you and which provides you internal internal joy and happiness and that makes your stress vanished away all right so gains the hot season the mid forest break now here the writer is even even finding beauty in the middle of forest all right what do you mean by break thick forest undergrowth all right so writer here is presenting yet another example of beauty yet another thing that provides us joy and happiness and it is the forest why forest because in forest you know the forest is sprinkled it's scattered with musk roses all right in forests we can see the beautiful musk roses blossoming all right so this also is a sight where we will be so happy this also gives us a sight to be happy and to have everlasting joy and such too is the grandeur of dooms this is very important children you know something uh, your life and decay they march hand in hand clear this we understood in keeping quiet also right life and death marches hand in hand these are the two vital aspects of nature isn't it so here also what is writer saying writer is saying that if we find happiness in you know uh, things living then we can even find happiness in things dying they also give us a magnificent you know the stories of people who have sacrificed their lives right so even that in that we find such comfort we are motivated we are inspired listening to all those stories of people who have sacrificed their lives for the for a noble cause isn't it so here he is saying that you can not only find joy in life but you can also find joy in death what do you mean by doom children doom is death all right so he is saying that you can even find the happiness in you know splendor death in the death of those people who have done something good you are inspired listening to the stories of those people aren't you yes so here whenever we listen to the stories of you know freedom fighters aren't we motivated and inspired yes we are so that is, that gives us 
happiness that yes we belong to the country where people have sacrificed their lives for country and nation isn't it so here writer is saying that we can not only find happiness in life but we can also find happiness in death we can also see you know the splendor in death all right so this is the meaning of these two paragraphs basically here the writer has presented us the list of all those beautiful things that gives us everlasting and eternal joy what are those children he is saying that in spite of all the first line is saying that the first line is trying to move us away from pessimism to optimism all right he is saying that just in spite of all the um, pessimism that you are facing in life all the disappointments that you are facing in life nature is something that casts an enchanting spell all right it gives us soothing and calm experience clear and now here we have he had mentioned few shapes of beauty and what are those shapes of beauty sun moon clear rills daffodils sheep all right so all these are the list and even the death of mighty people powerful people people noble people all right so he has mentioned presented a list of all those things that gives us eternal joy all right now coming on to the word meanings paul dark cloud of something here it has been compared to the problems of life boon means blessing all right and then rills means small water streams clear cover means area which is covered by uh, you know thick bushes that where animals can hide here covered means something that is providing us shade all right something that is making us relaxed clear now here grandeur means splendor all right now the uh, literary devices that have been used children paul as i told you, told you is a metaphor paul means cloud of something here it is not the cloud it is the problems that is that are hovering us now here antithesis in the previous paragraph also we learned antithesis antithesis means when two opposite contradictory statements are provided in the same sentence now the tree is old and young so old trees also and young trees also he is telling us that trees play a very vital role in providing us uh, you know a uh, shade all right they are a gift for <coughs> they are a gift for us right so any tree it might be it might be a young tree or it might be a be an old tree so antithesis here alliteration s s so it is alliteration now here imagery what do you mean by imagery when a picture is formed in our mind uh, reading few words now when we are reading this clear rills then a picture of a water stream emerges in our mind isn't it so here imagery has been used again here alliteration has been used cooling covert c c what is alliteration the occurrence of same consonant sound in the beginning of two adjacent words or two closely related words all right so it is alliteration again doom when grandeur of doom we start thinking about deaths that take place so it is also creating an image in our minds all right whenever we read something and an, a, a picture is created in our minds it is known as visual imagery and we can hear see whenever we read these word daffodils also all right when we talk about daffodils i don't know whether you have read the poem of wordsworth daffodils it's a beautiful beautiful poem and in that poem he has mentioned the growth of daffodils the sight of daffodils so beautifully that whenever the word daffodils comes in front of me now especially then a picture of so many daffodils comes in front of me all right so daffodils they grow in large number so here the word daffodils is creating that sight where several daffodils are growing in the uh, nature all right so this is the meaning of these two paragraphs you can pause the video and write down whatever i have written the word meanings and the literary devices used
All right, students, so we are going to uh, finish this poem now. And now, as I told you, that beauty, according to John Keats, is not only in birth, but also in death and decay. All right. So in the last paragraph, we have seen that we have imagined for the mighty death. Now, what do you mean by mighty death, children? You know, people who have glorified death by embracing it most gracefully and magnificently. All right. People who have, you know, embraced their death for the cause of good, for a noble cause. All right. People who have sacrificed themselves for something good, they are referred to as mighty death. You know, uh, all those things, all those people who have sacrificed themselves for something good or for a noble cause, their death is recorded in the leaves of history, isn't it? And that is, that leaves an indelible imprint on our minds. They become a source of inspiration and motivation for all of us, isn't it? We feel proud listening to all those tales of the mighty people who have, you know, just accepted death for something good all right or who have sacrificed themselves for something good so right here he is trying to say we have imagined for the mighty dead so we can imagine that the mighty dead people who have embraced their death who have glorified death and embraced it gracefully they are also a source of beauty they also give us joy and happiness and they motivate us they inspire us whenever we read the story of any person who had embraced death for the cause of good we feel motivated isn't it and lovely tales that we have heard or read the tales you know as i told you that if someone has done something good all those tales are recorded in history, right? Recorded on the leaves of history. And then whenever we read them, whenever we come across them, whenever we hear them, they leave an indelible imprint on our mind, isn't it? So whenever we read those stories or we hear the stories of great people who are no more, who exist no more, but still they are, you know, a source of joy and happiness for us, isn't it? An endless fountain of immortal drink. Now, what is the fountain of immortal drink, children? This immortal drink is the source of beauty, nature. Nature is a drink for all of us and that drink is immortal. That nature is immortal. We all know nature is going to go ahead like this. Only what, are, what is mortal that will never come to an end. So here nature is a kind of a drink. All right. And that drink will leave an everlasting happiness within us. So he's saying that an endless fountain of immortal drink. What is it? What is an endless fountain of immortal drink? Beauty of nature pouring onto us from heaven's brink. Brink means edge. So, of course, it is a gift. Beauty or nature is a gift for all of us that has been given to us by heaven, by God, isn't it? So here, what has been mentioned is just drink the immortal drink of nature. Experience the beauty of nature. Experience that joy and happiness Feel that, you know, happiness within when you are in nature. So, writer has mentioned that it is like a drink. And whenever you feel that drink, whenever you drink that drink, all right, you will go in eternal peace. You will feel so soothing. You will feel calm, relaxed. All your stress will vanish. And this is how nature is. So in the entire poem, children, we saw how John Keats was a worshipper of beauty. Isn't it the worship of beauty? Yes, it is. He is worshipping nature. He has, you know, considered nature everything. What else can we expect from a person who is about to die? We knew John Keats and John Keats himself knew that he is going to die of tuberculosis as there was no cure for tuberculosis that time. All right. So he knew he is going to die. 
and he wanted to carry you know be, he wanted to be happy till he is living he wanted to be full of joy till he is living and that joy he could only find in nature children there are so many experiences that we can you know see there are so many things that we can read about john keats the ode to nightingale he says that that poem when he wrote ode to nightingale he was sitting and he heard the sound of nightingale he in real, real heard the sound of nightingale and he penned down his experience whatever he felt when he was hearing that you know melodious sound of nightingale he penned that down on paper such a beautiful experience was john keats ahead with that he could only find that solace in nature all right according to him beauty is you know something that casts an enchanting spell on us it is a blessing for all of us it gives us it keeps us away from negativity it keeps us away from pessimism it gives us optimism it takes us closer to optimism right and as far as the hard words are concerned only one word is there bring bring means edge all right just the extreme edge and immortal drink is the beauty all right what is the immortal drink immortal drink is beauty that is conferred upon us by god from heaven it comes to us all right so we should enjoy it. here the lesson ends children i would like to take 5 minutes from you all as uh, uh, i know several students all of you are preparing for neat iit jee and uh, you know you all are pursuing your careers right but do not forget to give time to english if you are understanding whatever i am explaining to you well and good enough just pen down whatever i write on the board pen down few of my statements which are very necessary to be written in the answers please do give importance to english too all right do not ignore this the subject students who opt for science and maths or bio they usually ignore this subject and hence when the result comes no what happens is that uh, they get very less marks in english which is really painful all right your result will when it when the your result will come it will show the total including english isn't it so please give little time to this subject also just try to read whenever you, even if you give half an hour or one hour to this subject english then it is fair enough right and a few students uh, gave me a call saying that ma'am can it be taught in hindi right so uh, can few words of hindi be used english is never taught in hindi first of all all right and i am deliberately using a few uh tough words because when you write your paper in examination when you're going to write your english paper children then you will have to use few tough words so that the the examiner can give you the person who's checking your copy may give you extra marks you must have seen children hardly anyone gets full marks in english all right the record says that 20 30 students entire cbsc in uh, enrollment gets full marks get full marks right why is this happening because if a class 6th boy is speaking good english and same english is being spoken by a student of class 11th and 12th what is the difference between them nothing right so when the paper is checked there is a division of marks over there right and that division of marks include vocabulary also the writing skill also all right so that's why deliberately i use not much i'm using very normal english but i put two or three words deliberately tougher words so that you may learn them you may find the meanings of those words all right so uh, just for that sake i'm using these words please pen down all those words try to find the meanings of all those words and try to give some time to english also so that you may get good marks in english all right if there is any problem you can always contact me there is no problem in that but please try to give time to english also clear language is really really important children in future also when you're going to become something then you will have to present yourself and you'll you'll have to speak about yourself right and that you cannot do in hindi 
studying in an English medium school throughout your life, you cannot give your introduction or you cannot present your presentations in Hindi, isn't it? You are going to work in MNCs or anywhere around the world. So there you are going to be, you are, you will be asked to present or you will be asked to speak about your presentations, isn't it? And that you will have to do in the language. So start speaking in English and start giving some time to English for the total result that you are going to get. I hope you have understood. I'm speaking it at the end of the lesson. I don't know how many students are going to, uh, you know, uh, follow this, but I really want you all to follow this. All right. Thank you.